Anyways, welcome everybody. Welcome to uh, your uh, free webinar tonight, Closing the Gap, Getting to Where It Is That You Want to Be. Uh, first of all, for those of you who don't know me, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Alex Lombardi. I am a designer of futures, international real estate woman of influence, and a pizza lover, admittedly, as one of my passions. So uh, thank you for joining. However you got here, whether you got here because you know me or you saw an ad or someone told you to come on today, I just really, really want to thank you for being here and, uh, and for giving me your time and attention for the next uh, 40 minutes or so, 45 minutes or so. So... The reason that I'm on here tonight is because I just got back, as some of you may know if you've been following me, uh, I just got back from a, uh, a pursuit of my dreams. I was in Italy for uh, three and a half months, which was something that I wanted to do since I was a little girl, or little girl, a young woman, I will say 17 years old. And um, I'm not somebody who... Uh, necessarily, as much as I have a lot of self-confidence and I know myself as someone to be uh, capable of, of accomplishing big things, I also had times when I struggled, obviously, and things that I never thought I would do. And certainly moving to Italy for three and a half months and becoming uh, an international businesswoman, which I now am, was not something that I thought was ever going to happen, although it was something that I had always wanted to happen. And uh, while I was going through the journey, I realized that um, I'm not smarter than a lot of you on here. I'm probably not smarter than most of you on here. What, it, what I do have is, an, uh, un, uh, first of all, a big imagination and, and uh, just a relentless, uh, uh, a re just relentless effort to go after what it is that I want in my life because I really do believe that if you believe that something is possible, it, you can make it happen. And sometimes we just don't have those tools. So when I was in Italy, I wasn't sharing what I was doing because I wanted to impress people. I wanted to impress upon people that if I can do this and if I can go and create this life that there was, you know, definitely I didn't think was in the stars for me, then you guys can go and accomplish anything that it is that you want. And I know you wouldn't be on here if you weren't people who are up to something in their lives or at least want to be up to something in their lives. And sometimes... Um, we're our own worst enemies. So I just want to take the next few 45 minutes and see if we can't look at some areas of our life that uh, where, where we can maybe um, try to figure out what, how it is that we can have, what it is that we really want, and maybe even discover some areas that you didn't know were going the way that you wanted them to and create some really awesome things in those areas as well. So Here's how we're going to do this tonight. I'm going to go through an exercise with you. So if you don't have a pen and paper handy, you probably should. You don't have to, but if you don't have a pen and paper handy, you probably want to grab one because we're going to do a little bit of inquiry. Now, disclaimer, it took me 45 years to figure all this out. I don't think we're going to figure this all out in 45 minutes, but certainly we're going to start to scratch the surface and hopefully at least I'll put you in an inquiry as to you know, what it is that you want out of your life and maybe start to have you look at uh, how it is that you can get there. I, somebody asked me once how I know that I had a full day. And the answer for me is, um, I know I've had a full day when I've made somebody cry. When somebody expresses emotion and when somebody, when I can touch somebody, because I got them to the point where they're looking at something that maybe they were afraid to look at, something that they look at often, but don't really look at it in a certain way. When you start to see that something is there and you see that light at the end of the tunnel, then you can become emotional about it. And that's great because emotions create your feelings and your feelings create your actions and your actions create your results. So hopefully, I always say making people cry is a good thing, right? So um, we're gonna so we're gonna we're gonna do an exercise today where we're gonna look at trying to get a little bit of clarity and mapping your future. Okay, so we're gonna start to look at mapping out your future. Then we're gonna look at the things that stop you. We're gonna start to look at some of the things that are going on in your head, that inner villain that is telling you that you can't do things. And we're gonna see if we can't um, open up some things for you in there. Then we're gonna look at some solutions because I definitely wouldn't want to see you, you know, I'm gonna help you create a problem and then I'm gonna leave you there. 
So we're going to start to look at some solutions around that. And then, at, and then finally, we're going to see if there's maybe an action that you could take that could fuel you, fuel you to your next level. Okay. There's actions you can take all the time that can fuel you to your next level. We have considerations. We have reasons. We have excuses, time, money, my mother, my kids. I'm a single mom. I know that was a big excuse for me for a long time. But at the end of the day, the only thing that's going to get you to where you want to be is an action. And most of the time, it's going to be a very drastic action. It's going to be something that you normally wouldn't do, something that doesn't make a lot of sense to you for this reason or that reason. But that's actually the action that needs to be taken. OK, so. I just want to make sure that everybody's fully engaged tonight. I am somebody that when I go on a Zoom call, my camera is always on. I don't want to make anybody wrong for not having their camera on. So if your camera's not on, that's perfectly fine. It doesn't have to be on. Here's all I want to say to you about that. Obviously, you felt it there was going to be some value here for 45 minutes to come on a call and look at your life and look at the things that you want to close the gap on. So I'm going to invite you for the next 40 minutes to be fully engaged. You owe it to yourself. You deserve to be fully engaged in your life. Maybe you can't have your camera on because there's something going on behind you. But if you're in your pajamas, that's OK. We like pajama people. Um, but whether your camera is on or whether your camera is off, make sure you have no distractions around you. Put your, you know, your cell phone away. Turn off your email. Dedicate the next 40 minutes, not to me. Dedicate the next 40 minutes to yourself. I don't know if you guys know this, but we're all going to the future. Does anybody disagree? Raise of hands for anybody that disagrees. We're all going to the future. So I say, let's put something there that makes it worth going to. Because right now, for some of you, what's in the future, you don't want to go to. Life is beautiful and you can find beauty around every corner. And if you can't find beauty, wherever you're sitting right now, if you're sitting in your bed or in your family room or in your car or you're walking your dog, it doesn't matter where you are. You can look around you and you can find beauty wherever you are. And if you can't, go grab a mirror because you're beautiful. You are a creation, you're a spirit, and there's something inside of you. You wouldn't be on this call if you weren't beautiful and you didn't have something inside of you that was worth giving to others and especially giving to yourself. I say be selfish because when you're happy, everybody around you is happy. When your light shines, you allow other people's lights to shine. And most people don't dedicate that time to themselves. We're great moms. We're great business people. We're great at what we do for a living. But what we're not great at most of the time is being great with ourselves. Okay, so give yourself the permission to do that. So. If you want to turn your cameras on at any point, I would love that. I can see you all. If not, then that's fine as well, okay? Last thing I want to do, I think we're all well enough into the Zoom world now that everybody probably that's on here, you got on the call, so obviously you know how to get on Zoom. Does everybody know how to use their emojis? I just want to make sure everybody's alive. Whether you're on a camera, whether you're on camera, whether you're not on camera, please go pick a reaction and show me that you're all alive so that I know that you're on. I know that you're paying attention. I know that you know how to use your hearts and your sad faces, whatever that case may be. Okay, great. Because I'm not TV. I know it looks like I'm TV and I've always wanted to be on TV, but you know, I want this to be a participate. I want you to fully participate here. Okay. So now just bear with me for one second so I can get my PowerPoint back on because I lost it in the middle of all that chaos. And here we go. This is where we would play the the music, but we don't have the music, so here we go. Okay, maybe we're not going to do this.
This is the this is the the power of life. Okay, we're gonna do this without a PowerPoint. So you got me. Uh, I want to get you guys on gallery view so I can see everybody there. Okay, James is laughing at me. James, don't laugh at me. Okay, all right, guys. Here's what we're gonna do. So I want you guys to take a look at my, we're gonna look at mapping your future. It, and we're obviously again 40 minutes. We're not gonna do this, but I want you to pick an area of. We're gonna look at the different areas of life. So. I'll, on my PowerPoint, it says it, but I'll tell you what they are. So I'm just going to rhyme off these categories and just think of one that sticks out for you where you know kind of you want to get somewhere. Maybe you don't know exactly where it is that you want to get to, but definitely it's something that, uh, you know, an area where you want to work on. So we have family, career, education, romance. We have health, recreation, friends, adventure, Travel, Susan, finances, charity, and spirituality, okay? So when we look at those areas, there might be something that what, wherever you are, your current status, I want you to start to tell the truth to yourself about that. So I'm going to give you the example of what I was looking at, and then hopefully I can hear from somebody um, to maybe get this going and bring it home and so that I make sure that you know where, I, where, where I'm coming from. So the current status for me, the area that, that I was that I was looking at when I did this exercise for myself is um, the area of this, actually. So I wanted to uh, move into the, uh, some people know or some people don't know this, but I'm a realtor. I've been a realtor for 15 years and um, I'm good at my job. So here's the truth. I'm good at my job, but I don't love it. I feel like I have a bigger purpose, but I'm afraid I haven't got what it takes to do what I love and generate a consistent income from it, okay? Exponential growth can be achieved when you know your destination before you begin. But sometimes we don't know our destination or we do know our destination, but we don't know how we're gonna get there. So that's what stops us. So just from a couple of people, you can type it in the chat or you can raise your hand and I'll pick on somebody, but why are you in this room right now? What's your pain right now? James? Uh, well, Alex, you know, I mean, I'm a big fan of yours and I really did enjoy following what you did in Italy and a lot jealous of that. But uh, I, I think I'm here for just to hear what you have to say about things. I have a lot of respect for you and uh, having met you kind of through uh, our, our uh, realtor, you know, um, connections, you know, just found somebody who was very outgoing and vivacious and you know kind of full of life and so have followed you as long and just yeah I'm really wanting to hear what you have to say here I you know I, I learn a lot from everybody and I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot from you today okay perfect so maybe there's something you see in me guys because when you see something in somebody it's almost like looking in, in a mirror when you give somebody a compliment or when you uh, don't like something about somebody often that's something that maybe you want for yourself not in a jealous way or out of envy, but I know for me, when I see people that have characteristics and traits that I, I, that I admire, I, I want to be like that too. So maybe there's something around, you're a self-expressed guy, James, because I, I know you, but, uh, or virtually anyways, we've never really met, but maybe there's something in, you know, maybe the, 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 why, the fact that I, you know, take chances, or I went on this big adventure, or maybe there's something like that, that you admire, and maybe that's something that you are looking to break open. I, I think you hit the nail on the head when you talked about fear, you know, you, what you were talking about was, you know, being a realtor and not loving your job, but wanting to do something that allow you to not worry about, you know, income coming in or doing something different. I think we all operate on fear. And that's a driver for a lot of us. Um, so, you know, for me, it, this is a constant process of me learning. And, you know, a year ago from when I started this journey to today, it's a completely different place. Um, but I still operate out of fear. So I'm always looking for what people have to say about how they've overcome their fear and done what you did this summer, which was fantastic. Okay, great. So now you're going to maybe take that and work on this. And guys, you can take the, the format and the steps for this exercise and work on it in all every single area of your life that that where there's an issue, where there's somewhere that you currently are that you want to get to, but you you don't know how to. So maybe for you, James, it's going to be, you know, where does fear stop you, right? So you want to tell yourself, what's the current status? What's the truth around that for yourself? Okay, so you're going to jot that down. 
I have iPhone. I know <laughs> if you have your name as iPhone or iPad, you got to change it or otherwise they can't call on you. Somebody has their hand up. That's it says iPhone on your. On your name. I have my hand up, but I don't know if it says hi iPhone or Lucy. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's why. So, okay, good. So does mine you, say, does mine say iPhone? Sorry, Alex. I didn't know. Everybody I didn't, I had that. Is, every, iPhone is Lucy, everybody. Okay, Lucy, what about you? Hi, everybody. Hi, Alex. Nice to see you again. You so, too. Um, I met Alex through another uh, community that I'm part of. It's called the 5 a.m. Wake Up Call. And um, Alex was one of our guest speakers on, on Friday. And uh, it was funny because that whole week I missed the call. I couldn't get up at all. And for some reason I woke up on that Friday morning, something made me wake up and I dialed into the call and there was Alex and she was telling uh, us her story. And I was immediately drawn to your personality, um, your frankness, your honesty, your kind of no excuse my language, but no bullshit kind of approach to everything. And I was really, really uh, encouraged by your story. Um, you, I, I just resonated with you immediately. And uh, I, if you remember on the call, I, I asked you to be my uh, Facebook friend right away. <laughs> I sent you an invite and I was like, I want to be your friend. Um, Lucy, for I, you, where, where is there, where, where do you not see clarity yeah in your future like what area is that so really for me good? it's it's uh it's career and what you said at the beginning of uh you love what you do uh I, and i, I re again i resonate with that i love what i do i'm really good at my job but like you i feel like i could be doing something bigger and better somewhere else um and that's where right now is sort of my stuck point is um in my career okay so that's good because you have a starting point. So there's a couple of examples for the rest of you, whatever it is, uh, whatever area of your life that you want to work on where you are right now. And there's a big, huge gap between where you are and where you want to be Write down. What is the current status? What is the truth around that area? Okay. Then we're going to go to the next step, which is your one year goals. Now, when you don't know where you want to go, and I'm guilty of this, sometimes you don't know what your goals are. You, you don't even know where you want to be. You just know you don't want to be where you are right now, but you don't quite know where to get to. Cheryl's smiling because I think maybe I just said something. Yes? Yeah? Okay. So here's what I want you to do. I'm going to give you a little uh, way to break that open a little bit for yourself. What's the opposite of your goal? So if you were to look at your one-year goal in that area, Okay, for James, it's maybe breaking. I mean, I, I just sort of put that out there. Maybe it's not that James, but we can work on that and then you can work on something else. But areas where you're stopped, an area where you let fear get in the way. If you were to look at what your one year goal, maybe you don't know what the one year goal is, but what do you not want? What is it that, what's the opposite of your goal? What is it that you don't want in that area? And for Lucy, it's the same thing. Okay, so you look at your career, it's not working. What's the worst case scenario? Where, you, where do you not want to be in a year? And see if that'll help you to open up where it is that you actually do want to be. So who who else? Who has another area? Let's go to somebody else. I want to try to get as much sharing as possible. There's not that many. Uh, we don't have that much time. But somebody that has an area that they know um, that they want to work on, that there's a gap between where they are and where they want to be, and kind of knows what they don't want to happen in that area. Natalie's smiling. Natalie, are you smiling because you have it? She always waits for me to pick her. <laughs> I didn't want to say it out loud. And I was like, she's going to pick me. She's going to pick me. She's going so to pick me. So here it is, guys. <laughs> like, you know what? We don't want to share what's going on for ourselves. Oh. And it's like you're, it's, it's, somebody else is in the same position. So, you know, it's sharing is caring. So go ahead. Tell me what it is. What's your area? Uh, my area is finances okay. and family kind of okay. a hybrid I just got married so it's a bit of kind of both things yay married <laughs> okay so there's a future so what do you not want in that area in one year um well I don't want to be in the same financial position I'm in now okay. like I know I don't I want to go a year and be like I'm really in the same place come on 
wake up. <laughs> okay. So you, you clearly know that that's what you don't want, right? Yeah. So for those of you that have this, I don't know what I want. I don't really know. Yes, you do. Figure out what you don't want and then work it backwards. And then you can, that'll open something else up for you there. Cheryl, you're not, you keep nodding. I'm going to go to Cheryl, Cheryl Lester. Okay. Unmute yourself. What's your area? You know, it's funny because my area is um, family and marriage. So I know that I don't want to be, I don't want them to dislike me any more than they already do. So I need to change gears and, and yeah. So that's all I know is I don't want to, you know, I want to have a better, and not that it's bad. I just want to be at a different level, a different area than I am now. So this is what we do. We, we come up with the problem as human beings. And then immediately we come up with a solution. We don't let our mind go and we don't take what it is that we think that we know about a situation and sort of put it on the shelf, bracket it. Like if you get a shelf, you put stuff on the shelf. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to take your opinion. Trust me. You can have it. Right. So mm -hmm. when you think you already know something, because Cheryl, you said, here's what I don't want. So this is what I need to do. Consider that you don't know what you need to do. Just be with me for the next 30 minutes and see if something else opens up, okay? Okay. The good thing is you're going to come up with a problem and what you absolutely don't want to be the future of that problem a year from now. And then stop okay. there. Nobody go any, for, any, more, any more further than that, okay? okay. One more person. Um, I have a question. Okay. Alex, uh, first of all, the reason I'm here today is you really, really inspire me, Alex. I mean, uh, I, I do have a lot of quotes like, you know, in states, but for me to have somebody within my office uh, and that's so much giving as well with your time before it's just like, let's do this. It's just, you're Thank so you. positive. And I want to turn around with somebody that's so positive so that that, you know, kind of um, follows me. Um, but the question I have is, for example, there are certain situations where you don't have a control of. For example, in a, uh, 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 do you have a control? You always have control of the situation because you don't always have control of the situation, like what's going to occur, but you always have control over who you're going to be in the face of that. Okay. And that Eden goes a little bit more to already trying to figure it out. Like you got the problem, you're automatically trying to figure it out. So follow the step, pick the area and tell me what you don't want in that area. Okay. What do you not want to happen a year from now? And then just stop there. Okay. Then, then we'll see what, what's going to open up. And then I, I'm available to you guys after, if we need to work on, on this a little bit further. And by the way, guys, thank you. Thank you for all the compliments. And, but Eden, I'm going to tell you the reason you're on here is not because I inspire you. The reason I, you're on here is because you inspire you mm. because somebody that wants to have an amazing life is, is not, is going to log on a call at eight o'clock at night when they could be, you know, watching Netflix, Money Heist, or whatever the case may be, spending time with their family, okay? So I honor, thank you, but honor yourself because that's why you're here. You. All right, awesome. Okay, so you're gonna, you have your current truth about the situation and we wanna figure out what are our one-year goals in that area. And if you can't figure out, some people know, no, this is what I want in a year. For me in one year, I wanna be generating $350,000 of income through online and in-person workshops and being invited to speak to audiences of over a thousand people. I want to be recognized and appreciated as a leader in our industry for positive change in people's lives and, and for people pursuing their dreams. Okay. Now I worked on that for a little while, guys. I didn't do it in two minutes on a Zoom call. Okay, but the clarity of the goal is there because I knew what I didn't want and I worked it backwards. So what don't you want? And then get really, really clear for yourself. What is that one year goal? One year, not five years, 10 years, 20 years, one year from now. On September 13th, 2022, what do you want to have happen in that area? Okay. Now, the next thing that we're going to look at is why these goals are important to you, okay? So the first thing is when you come up with the truth or what it is, whatever your current status is, that's your pain, okay? The second part, um, your, your future, this is where you want to go, 
The third thing, why your goals are important to you is your why, obviously. So what's your why? So for me, my why is showing people that anything is possible by example, and that following your dreams is the only way to live an extraordinary experience of being alive. Making a difference in the lives of others and helping them is the most important thing in my life. So that's my why. Okay. So first, let's go to somebody else now. You have your area. You know the current truth of the situation. You have some idea of what you want or what you don't want, which is going to bring you closer to what you want. Why do you want this? Who has an area? And by the way, there's no wrong answers. It's your life. Full contact. I'm going to go to Marala. Ha. You got to come and play with me. You said you wanted to get uncomfortable, my dear. I always like playing with you, Alex, in the sandbox. <laughs> Life begins at the end of your comfort zone. Okay. Here's an invitation. Here's an opportunity for the next 28 minutes to get uncomfortable so that you can break through something in your life that you never thought possible to, could happen in 28 minutes. Okay. So then whoever's feeling really, really uncomfortable, raise your hand so that I can see. And then I'll, and then I'll pay. There you go. Okay. What's your area? Okay. So you know what? I actually had to take a call when you were, <laughs> when you were just talking, but my, my, if we backtrack, um, I, I just, I want to get bigger. I, I, uh, it was when I started in 2019, um, I'm starting to think out of the box. I want to work with developers. I want to work with people that relocate here within the GTA. Um, I love residential. I love families, but I also want to um, work with uh, uh, more than just the families. Okay. So then why are these goals important to you? And this, I'm, not, I'm talking to Morella, but I'm talking to everybody. So whatever your goal is, whatever, whatever goal you have or or, you know, don't want, and then you're going to get to your goal. Why is that important to you to have? Or if it's a case of what you don't want, why is it important for you not to have? So what's the why? So I, I, um, I feel that just having the partnership with, um, with another um, person, another company, maybe even bringing back that corporate um, back. I, I have that corporate background, maybe bringing that corporate back into my life. Um, in the sense of helping people relocate to the GTA, um, but bigger and better. It's not the money. It's what you can do with the money that motivates you, right? So money is not the motivation. It's the inspiration of what you can actually do with it. Okay. So if you had all this money and this is guys, when I ask you why you want something, you start to scratch the surface of it. Consider you have to ask yourself the, the question seven times. So Marala, why do you want this? Quick answer. One answer. So I can travel more. Okay. Why do you want to travel more? So I could uh, experience life, the world with my husband, Mike. Okay. Why do you want to experience life with and the world with your husband, Mike? Because it's a beautiful uh, world. <laughs> And, and I just, I love spending time with him. I absolutely um, love uh, everything. We work together um, and we're just, just to be happy, just to. So you want to be happy with your husband. Why do you want to be happy with your husband? Why don't you want to be happy with him? <laughs> it's just a, a, a what it's is like it a fulfillment, you? fulfillment too, right? Fulfillment of what? Of just love, accomplishments, like, you know, um, uh, you know, the whole, I don't want to be cliche in terms of like the whole freedom and time, you know what I mean? Like, but, but it does, it, it all, it all encompasses that whole thing, right? So why do you want freedom and love with your husband? Um, because I just want to grow old together. Okay. And why do you want to grow old together? Because he's my soulmate. Okay. Well, that's just, not a reason. That's a fact. <laughs> why would you like, just clo like close your eyes for a second and look, think of your husband, look at your husband's face. It, imagine your husband. Why do you want, why do you want to grow old with Mike? 
because he just he he treats me he treats me well. We have such an amazing family, and and he's he's um, uh, he compliments me. I compliment him. Um, okay. So why do you want to be with someone that compliments you and gives you an amazing life? Because it makes me a better person too, right? Okay, there you go. So that's the answer, right? Because, and I know this because I know you. So all of this, whatever the builder, the, the, the thing and the helping the people and whatever, it, what it all boils down to at the end of the day, Morella, is you want to be a better person. And I know you as someone that wants to be the best person that you can be as long as you're on this side, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the why. Because who you are is someone that searches for and continually goes out to make yourself a better person because you know that that's what's going to impact other people as well. So all the blah, 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 blah that you guys are doing, it's not blah, blah, but consider that the first answer is not the answer. You got to go seven levels deep. So ask yourself, when you ask yourself, when I say, why are these goals important to you? So when you're looking at your, why is it important to you, Natalie, to have the financial freedom? Okay. You're going to answer yourself and then you're going to go. And then why is that important? And then why is that important? Just the way I did it with Morella. And the, at the seventh, sixth or seventh level is when you're going to start to really get to the answer. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go one more time because that was fun. Sonia Domenko, just sitting there in the middle of my screen, smiling, nodding, writing. <laughs> Are you getting some stuff here? Hi. Yeah, I'm writing Hello. stuff down. Okay, perfect. Okay. So what's your area, Sonia? Uh, career. Okay. So... We're not going to go through the whole thing, but there's a current truth that you have about your career. There's one-year goals, things that you do want or absolutely don't want to have in your career. And then I'm going to ask you, and you know what those things are. Then I'm going to ask you, why is that important to you? So why is it important to you? Um, because, I wanna, because I want to help others. Okay. So why do you want to help others? Because that, it fulfills my soul. Okay. And why do you want your soul to be fulfilled? Because I want people to be in a better state than I found them in. Okay. And why do you want people to be in a better state that you found them in? Because I want people to remember that they can hope for anything and believe in anything that they, they, they want. <laughs> and why, do you, why is it important for you that people keep, that people have hope? This is the reason why I started my business is because hope anchors the soul. Okay. And so when the soul is anchored, why is that important? Because that you're, you're able to, to do whatever your mind uh, can conceive. And why do you want to do whatever it is that your mind can conceive? Why is that important? I think it, it comes down to making like being happy, right? If I know that others are happy, that makes me happy. Okay, there it goes. Because she said being happy. That's an easy answer, right? But again, now you're inside of the fulfillment of others because who you are is someone that when you see joy around you and you see happiness around you, that's what fulfills you and that's what fills your soul. Yeah, okay. that's exactly what I, I got to at the end. <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay, and again, guys, this is like five minutes, 10 minutes. I'm talking to you on the spot. But if you really, really sat with, the, with your answers and you went seven levels deep, you would get to the, and this is such a beautiful gift you can give yourself because I was running around for years thinking that what was going to, and I was saying that what was going to make me whole is having a relationship and being in love and work didn't matter. If I didn't have somebody to share it with everything that it came down to when I got to the bottom of this exercise is that the most important thing in life for me is to, is to help others. The most important thing in life for me is to push others to get people, I say to light a fire inside of people, not underneath them. And that's, that's the reason that I'm, that I, I am alive. And I know now, because when I have that why, and I look at what I thought was what something that I wanted, it actually doesn't matter. The most important thing is that. Okay. And I have a lot of important things in my life. I'm a mom, I'm a, you know, I, I'm a businesswoman and all of those things are important. But at the end of the day, I would give everything else up if I could have that. So for Morella, for Sonia, for Lucy, for whoever it is on there, Cheryl, when you get to that last answer, 
would you give up your lot, like your right arm for that thing? Unless the Y is the right arm, then obviously you wouldn't, right? But okay, so that's how you want to go through that and ask yourself those questions. Okay. Um, so now we're going to look at this beautiful thing that I call the inner villain, okay? Battling self doubt. So as soon as you invent something, you create something for yourself, the first thing, you don't even need a mother in law or a mother or, a, or a, a skeptical friend. You're all good at that all by yourself of telling yourself why you absolutely cannot do that. There's no way in hell that that's ever going to happen. Okay. And that's that inner villain. That's that little voice or that little thing on your shoulder, okay? And as much as we tell ourselves to flick it off or don't listen to that, you know, it's difficult sometimes, right? The inner villain feeds on negativity and it creates the story of why things won't work. If you change the story, you change your life, okay? So whatever story that thing is telling you, if you can change that story, you can change your life. So to Eden's point, the story of whatever it is of why, you know, you don't have control over that. That's your story about the certain situation or why it can happen. If you changed your story to, I have control over it instead of, I don't have control over it. That changes everything. Can you see that everybody like just on the surface? I mean, then you got to do the work, right? But if your story is, I don't have control over it. How are you ever going to have control over it? Okay. What affects or paralyzes your confidence? What are those things? Because ultimately the inner villain attacks at, the, at the, the, the beauty that is you, the greatness that is you, the little glimpses of that that you see for yourself because we all see those things at times. And then that self-doubt, that inner villain is telling you that you can't do those things and it affects and paralyzes your confidence. And there are three main things that are gonna uh, affect and, or paralyze your confidence. And in some way, shape, or form, everything falls into these categories. The first thing is confidence killers. So let me tell you what I mean about that. When we're little, if we can't read, they tell us to practice reading more. If we can't, you know, if we're not good at math, they tell us you have to learn math. And then what they do or what people do is they highlight our weaknesses. And that just goes and feeds the lack of confidence even more. So what I say is don't work on your weaknesses. Work on your strengths. There's things that you're extraordinarily good at. We focus on what we're not good at because we think if we improve the things that we're not good at, then we'll be better and we'll be able to tackle things in a different way. Screw the things you're not good at. I have uh, my team on here, Michael and Greg, who have been helping me to create um, you know, my new program, which is coming out on September 25th. A million of the things that they're doing, I suck at. There is no possible way that I would have ever been able to put any of all this together if I would have relied on myself, okay? There are people you can hire to do the things you suck at. There are people that can't read, that are leading seminars right now and workshop, workshops right now internationally making a shitload of money and they can't read. They're dyslexic. They have people that do their copy for them. They have people that approve things for them, okay? So... Work on your strengths. Don't work on your weaknesses. And that's how you get to your greatness. So you might want to start listing your strengths. What is it that you're good at? What is it that if you don't know what you're good at, ask your kid, ask your friend, ask somebody beside you. We people know what we're good at. We know what we're good at, too. We just don't want to admit it because, again, who am I to? Right. OK. The second thing that's going to paralyze your confidence part of what this inner villain is going to work on is outside influences. So those could be things like obviously people in your life. It could be things like the news, right? If something affects your or paralyzes your confidence, you need to get rid of it. Period. End of story. One of the things that I realized when I was in Italy, because I had a lot of time to think and, you know, I was working and, but obviously I had a, a lot of time to myself. And one of the decisions that I made for myself is that I am not gonna ever suffer ever again. Any situation that I come into, how, no matter how small it is, if I'm suffering, I'm out. So I'll give you an example. I was um, planning to go to the beach one day with a friend of mine who I love dearly. 
And she invited a friend of hers to participate, to come to the beach with us on the Saturday. So Friday night, we they went out for ice cream and she invited me to come out with them for an ice cream. And I met this woman, God bless her. She was so annoying. I didn't know how I was ever going to spend a whole day with this woman. So the nice Alex or the person who my mom says, be nice to people and who cares. And my friend said to me, oh, you know, what are you going to do? You're not going to go, just go, who cares? You know, don't talk to her. Don't listen to her, turn the other way. And I said, no, I'm not going to spend a day at the beach, which is supposed to be enjoyable with someone that's going to drive me squirrely the whole time that I'm there. So I called my friend in the morning and I said, listen, I'm not coming. That's it. Okay. Oh, you're not going to come. You're going you're gonna to spend it. I, I had stuff to do. And I ended up staying home. I got caught up on some work that I had to do. Bottom line, I'm not suffering. I was at the uh, coffee shop the other morning and this lady sat down and started, you know, spewing things out of her mouth that I didn't really appreciate. I got up and I left in a nice way. I excused myself. Okay. I got to go to work and I left. I am not going to suffer anything in my life that is affecting or paralyzing my confidence. That's making me feel miserable. I'm going to get rid of it. And if that's people, get rid of the people. You can do it in a not nasty way. Okay? So make a list of the people in your life that are the confidence killers. Make a list of the people in your life that are paralyzing you. At one point in my life in 2014, I, I, had a, 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 I fell into a depression. I had, a, I had a nervous breakdown. And I, I literally went to my computer and started typing emails to every single person in my life that was making me miserable, not in a mean way, excusing them from, excusing myself from their life. Organizations that I was involved in that were sucking the life out of me. I politely declined. Okay. I'm not saying go out and tell everybody to screw off or maybe do that. If that's what's going to make you feel better, you want to be responsible how you're going to land for people. You don't want to leave people in the wake of a, you know, a tornado. But the most important thing in your life is you. I'm going to say that again. The most important thing in your life is you. So okay? Alex, would you do it if it was immediate family? Anybody that's making me suffer is going to be eliminated in one way or another. Okay. Now, if it's your mom, if it's your sister, if it's a media family, again, Eden, there's a story around what's wrong with that. Right. So again, you got to go back to your goals. If what you want is peace and harmony, if what you want is to be fully expressed, if what you want is to achieve extraordinary results in your business, and you've got this anchor called my sister-in-law, how is that going to get you to where you want to go? Okay. You're all big. You're all grown ups, right? Life exists in language. Anything can be resolved in communication. And maybe you need to get a little bit of coaching on how to communicate with people, right? Coming from a place of love, not coming from a place of attack. So maybe there's a little bit of, of, of coaching that you can get around that on how to have a conversation because maybe inside of that conversation, you'll eliminate the problem and without eliminating the person. You don't necessarily have to eliminate the person, right? Okay. So the third thing, taking bad advice. This is another thing that's going to, you know, get that inner villain going and fueled. So we, we, we tend to take advice from the wrong people sometimes. Here's what I'm going to say about that. Would you take relationship advice from someone who was single? Would you take, Cheryl's laughing, would you take money advice from somebody that was broke? Okay. Most of the answers that you guys need to find are in the mirror. Once you get the in, inner villain out of the way, most of the answers that you need to find are in the mirror. Okay. And if you do need to go to someone and you need to, do you need to, to take that next step, then go to someone that is credible. Go to someone that already has what it is that you want. So if you look at your goals and what you want to achieve, who in your life do you know that has already achieved that? It might not be that exact same thing, but somebody that has gone through that, uh, down that path. So I have a coach. My, my coach is uh, not part of an organization that I uh, am a champion for because there are a lot of real estate organizations that I have a lot of respect for and that I follow and that I've been following for 15 years. I hired my coach because he did something that I wanted to do. He, um, 
he transformed or he moved from the space of having a business to being a coach and a speaker and a trainer inside that business. So I hired him because I didn't want to know how to sell real estate or how to do listing appointments or how to put together business plans. I wanted to know, how did you go from running this business to getting on a stage? So that's the coach that I hired. Who in your life do you know that has accomplished what it is that you want to accomplish, even if it's not exactly what it is that you want to accomplish, but has gone through that process? Start to make a list of who can help you. We get stuck in the tyranny of how. As soon as we have a problem and we want to do something or we know that we have to do something, we right away go to, well, how am I going to do that? Take out the how. Instead of how am I going to do that, who can help me do that? I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for Michael and Greg. I never would have been able to do this all by myself. So instead of how can I do that? Simple things, you know, ask Google. We sit there for hours and hours trying to figure stuff out. You want to know how to post a, this morning I was like, how do I get, do you see that cool little timer at the beginning of the call? This morning at 8, 90, at 847, I didn't know how to do that. And then I called Greg and I said, Greg, I want to get a timer on the call tonight. Do you know we can do that? He answered me in three minutes. It would have taken me three hours to figure that. Okay. So who can help me? Not how am I going to do that? Who can help me do that? Okay. Once you get that inner, and there's, you know, again, you can go through all this list. Now, when in my, in my, in my program in Future by Design, we spend a lot of time looking at what is it that stops you? What are those beliefs? What are the fears? What are the morals and values? What are the things that have gotten in the way? They all come from the past. And some of them are around us all the time, not necessarily from the past, but there's things in our life that are stopping us from moving forward, okay? So you really want to sit and inquire with this because again, we're not going to do this in, in five minutes, right? But just to acknowledge that there is this inner villain that is stopping you and it's not you, okay? It's outside of you. It's what people have said about you. It's what people have, even people that say to you that you're amazing. Like I, it's not, it, it, there was a specific moment in time very recently, probably about three weeks ago, where I finally said, oh, okay, I get it now. I get who I am for people now. Because I didn't want to admit it. I didn't want to say it out loud, right? Because I didn't believe that I, I was even deserving of all of that stuff. Even though everybody was telling me the inner villain is always at play, okay? So, the next thing we're going to do is now we've taken our, um, we have our, uh, sorry, we have our, our goal or our, or our area that we're working on. We know what are the current status is of the situation that we want to get to, the gap that we want to fill. We know what our one-year goals are or what they're not, what we don't want them to be. We know why these things are important to us. And we know that there's this little villain that is telling us why we can't do things. So now what I want to do is we're going to, map your future. We're going to look at full focus. Okay. So what is it that you need to do? What are some of the solutions? The first thing that you want to do, if you want to find the solution is you have to ask yourself and you probably want to write this down. What's the biggest problem holding you back from your next level? What is the biggest problem holding you back from your next level? Okay. And this one here, guys, don't cheat. Don't say me. Because it maybe it is you, but it's not just you. It's something about you. There's a, a conversation around the you that you really want to get underneath. So what's the biggest problem holding you back from your next level? Okay. So for me, there were things that I needed to do. I needed to put together. I needed to put together and hire a team. I need to increase my reach, people that follow me. I need to create time to implement and execute those things. I need to do a social media planning tool. I need a website. I need to sharpen my intellectual property. I need to create more intellectual property. These are all the things that I, that I need to do. And part of the problem was I didn't have, the biggest problem for me was I didn't have the outline for what it is that I wanted to execute. So then I started to go and say, okay, well, you know, what are the solutions? What are the list of capabilities that you need to achieve your goal? 
Okay, so what are the capabilities that you need in order to achieve your goal or what it is that you're looking to accomplish? And I'm going to pick on you, Anna LaRosa. Hello. You, Hi. Good, how are you? Hi. So, good, thank you. So what's your area? Um, so my biggest area would be fear of uh, rejection of moving forward in whatever areas I need to work on. Um, okay, that's the biggest one is okay. a fear, fear of failure, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's anybody else have that one? And no? I think a lot of people would have that, right? <laughs> yeah. Ultimately, here's, you know, so that's here's, the biggest here's one. The thing about, this is the thing about failure, guys. Life is a game. Mm -hmm. If you play it as a game, then everything else, it's all perspective, right? So when you play cards or when you play Pac Man or when you play Space Invaders or when you play Dual Blast or whatever it is that you play, what happens when the thing goes wah, 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 and the game is over? What do you guys do? Cry. What is it, Anna? What do you do? <laughs> Cry. <laughs> Is, it, is there a game that you like to play? Is there like a video game or, or an app Me? or something? Uh, mm -hmm. No, I like cards. Okay, cards. So when you play cards, cards who do you play cards with? Friends. Okay. Uh, so when you play cards with your friends, do you always win? No. Okay, and when you lose, what do you do? Uh, you can get upset and get, you know. Yeah, and then what do you do? Do you not play anymore? Get upset or you get, um, no, you keep playing but you can get aggressive you can sometimes get aggressive in the game you know it depends on the type of person you are yeah but then you yeah. play again right you keep playing yeah yeah because you, you don't win, right? you don't stop talking to your no. friends you don't recluse into a hole you don't quit your job you don't you play again right right it's right. a simple little thing but if you look at those things like something as simple as a card game or monopoly or dual blast or whatever it is that you're playing when you play and you lose, all you do is you just go and play again. Why are we so significant about everything else? Well, because we attach a lot of meaning to those things, right? We don't attach right. meaning to losing at a dual block. But you have right. the you have the makeup, the DNA to get past that because you get past it there. So fear of failure right. only means something when you attach a lot of meaning to what it is that you're failing at. So what is right. the biggest problem that's holding you back from your next level in the area of fear? Um, um, maybe rejection of where probably rejection. Yeah. Rejection because that right says now. something, because that says uh, something about, say, you about yourself, right? Right. Right. Rejection. Um, like you said, when you're looking for, um, advice or you're looking for the help to get to where you want to go it's the rejection is whether you're going to get that help from who you want it from or how are they going to uh, react to you right um things like that right so uh maybe they'll look at you and say well you're not there at that level you're not going to make it there and so there's that negativity that you get so you go you, you get rejected you feel rejection right and so that's the fear exactly Okay, so for Anna and for everybody else, whatever that thing is, whatever that big problem is, what are the capabilities that you need to have in order to in order to get past that? Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you in that inquiry, Anna, also because it's nine o'clock mm -hmm. and I just want to move on. But you got that's guys where you want to go start to look, right? Because inside of that is where then okay, so if it's negativity being, you know somebody's going to make fun of you or they're going to turn their back on you or they're not going to trust you. There's something that you need to build up in order for that not to affect or impact you or in order for you to react in a different way or to take a different action than what you would normally take. Okay. The third thing that paralyzes confidence is uh, taking bad advice. Natalie, I just saw that in the chat. Okay. So the, uh, the capabilities that you need to achieve your goal is the how. So we came up with the what, then we came up with the where we want to be, then we got to the why we want to be there, and now we're looking at how is it that we're going to get there? What do we need to, who do we need to become? What qualities do we need to, what capabilities do we need to 
to to bring forward, to work on, to take pull out of ourselves because a lot of those things are in there. Okay, and if you don't know, ask people. Right, not bad advice. Ask the people that know. Okay, so the last thing that I want to go over with you guys, and I know it's nine oh one, but everything every time I do something, I always say it, it ends at approximately. So I'll try to get through this quickly, but I also want to give you the value that uh, I think you you deserve, and I don't want to leave you hanging. So adding more to life. One of the biggest things that stops us from accomplishing anything in our life is how much time we waste. Okay. Time is literally of the essence. We all have a to-do list. Everybody on here, I'm sure has a to-do list with all of the things that they have to do that they check off. Sometimes they check off, maybe they get to, maybe that maybe they don't get to. What's more important than a to-do list is a just say no list. Okay. Write that down. My just say no list. What should you not be spending time on? Everything in your life that you do, you're going to list and you're going to either automate it, delegate it, or eliminate it. So what actions and what things do you spend time on now that don't serve growth, greater income, empowerment, your higher power, your family, a bigger future? What are your top three time wasters? Take a second and write that down. What are, what are the three things that you do Actions that you take in a day that uh, things that you spend time on that don't serve your growth, your in greater income, empowerment, your higher power, your family, or a bigger future. And do this without making yourself wrong, by the way, because I play dual blast sometimes too, just to fill five minutes and not have to think about stuff. So there's nothing wrong with those things, right? But where are you wasting time? Three time wasters. Type them in the chat. What's a time waster? I bet you everybody's going to have a bunch of the same answers. YouTube. Instagram, Facebook, watching TV, news, watching TV. YouTube, toxic people, scrolling. <laughs> TikTok, there it is. Social media, right? Do you know Netflix, drama? There you go. Do you guys know that these things are wasting your time? Okay. So you're going to get these things on your list. And then beside it, you're going to select everything that you have to do in a day. Automate is the first uh, option. Handoff is the second option. And the third option is stop. Okay. Time is of the essence. And most of the time, the reason that we don't accomplish what it is that we want to accomplish is because either we waste time or even more sadly, we don't take the time. We're so busy in our lives doing a lot of things and trying to accomplish all the goals that it is that, that or we say we're, not, we're more doing the things that we're doing and we're not looking at what it is that is gonna fulfill our lives. So just before I let you guys go here, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to uh, take an action in your life that could fuel you to the next level, all right? This is my dream book. Some of you have seen this, some of you haven't, but this is uh, something that I created many, many years ago just for myself. It's a, a, a book filled of 50 things that I wanna do before I die. And what I do is the practices, so there's a, there's a picture of, there's a, the, the dream or goal that I have and a visual representation of it. And then every time I accomplish something, I rip out the page and I put it in the back of the book. So now I have this book with all of my dreams and all of my dreams fulfilled. This was born for me as a practice, just something fun to do, something that I wanted to uh, create for myself. And the reason that I do it is because like I said to you guys before, where we're going is to the future, all of us, without exception. I say what I want in my future is my dreams, my passions, the things that I long for, the things that I desire, 
the things that you love, the things that you desire, your passions, they all lie inside of your dreams, right? So I live a life where everything in the future is my dreams and my goals. This has gotten me to everything that I've come to today in my life and places that I didn't think I would ever get to and with velocity as well. One of the things in my dream book is, I put this in here five years ago, was to look into the uh, crater of a volcano. I had no idea what this was going to look like. I think I watched Gilligan's Island and it was the episode where they threw the, what's her name, um, Ginger into the volcano. And I said, oh, that would be cool. There's volcanoes. Maybe I'll go to Hawaii one day or whatever the case may be, right? So when I was in Sicily, I went to the top of Mount Etna. And this is what I got. This, what I created in my mind, watching Gilligan's Island, ended up becoming something that I could actually touch and hold in my hand. If you can think of something, you can manifest it into reality. The difference between the thought and having it actually be real is everything that's in the way for you and the fact that you think that you can't do it. So the dream book is a really cool, fun thing to do, and anybody could probably create one. What is what is uh, unique about how this came to be is everything that has to get, I have to get out of the way in order to um, even put these things down. Because if I asked you to make me a list of 50 things you wanted to do before you die, you might come up with 10. Maybe. I came up with 14 the first time, right? Because we have all of these things that limit us from what it is that's possible. So in the in the workshop, what we do is we look at everything. We look at, like I said before, your morals and your beliefs, your values, the things that stop you. We make a whole bunch of lists. We take a personal inventory. Before we, we don't even start making the list until you know, two o'clock in the afternoon. Morella is nodding her head because Morella, you did the, the last dream book workshop, which was what it was called before. Do you want, can you share for a second just what you got out of it and why you keep listening? <laughs> why I keep listening to you? <laughs> um, well, you know what? You said this better not be fluff. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and uh, it, 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 it was exactly what I needed because in July, I had completed three of my dreams and I was so happy to rip out the pages out of my dream book. And just the wheel of life, you know, that you go through and, and um, really align, aligning, you know, your core values as to what you actually want to succeed in life and your future. Um, it's a, yeah, it's, it's like intense, but it's so worth it so worth it and like vision boards <laughs> like dream books are is is where it's at yeah okay so thank you so anyways guys i'm gonna give you an opportunity to register for to to, to check out the course anyways michael's gonna throw the link for future by design um in the chat for you you're also gonna get an email you'll you'll see stuff posted here's the thing i um the future by design is it's on saturday saturday september 25th it starts at 10 o'clock in the morning it goes to about 4 30 in the afternoon there is a little break um it's really fun right morella we do there's like we, it's very interactive very much like this platform here um th there's videos there's exercises there's lots of sharing we laugh a lot and um you know if you enjoyed spending time with me for 45 minutes hopefully you'll consider spending uh time with me for a whole day on Saturday and uh, starting to look at creating the and designing the future that you want to live. Um, I The course's regular price is $897. If you use the coupon code DREAMBOOK, all one word in capital letters, um, I'm going to give you an additional $200 off the price of the course. And if you register tonight before midnight, you'll automatically get an additional $100 off the course. So instead of $897, you'll be paying $597 to create a future that you get to design and that you deserve, okay? Because you all deserve to have amazing futures, whatever anybody else is telling you, whatever that inner villain is telling you. So um, check out the link if you guys... Oh, by the way, with included in the Future by Design uh, registration, when you do the program, you also get, after the course, one hour free one-on-one -on -one with me 
for participating in the course where we're going to take one of your dreams that you create. The biggest one is what I would suggest that you come to me with. And we're going to create a structure for fulfillment to get you to that dream. I don't care what it is. You want to meet the Pope? We're going to figure out a structure to get you to meet the Pope because there's a time, but there's also, if you don't start to create it, then it's never going to happen. Okay. And you'll work with me one-on-one -on -one with that. Anybody that knows me, I always tell people, if you think that you want to do something, if you really, really want to do something, don't tell me. Because if I know that there's something that you want to accomplish in your life, I'm on you for it forever. So those are the how, oh, sorry, not the how, that's the who can help me part of it, okay? So thank you very much, guys, for your time, for your attention. Uh, sorry for the technical uh, mishaps. Future by Design is run by an event coordinator, so none of that will happen inside of the program when uh, you attend on the 25th. And if you have any issues, concerns, questions, um, if there's, you know, any kind of thing that's stopping you, uh, reach out to me and I'll see if I can help you work that out. Because if you want to take this program and there's something in the way, I want to see if I can help you work through that. Because inside of that, there's probably something else that's stopping you. Not in only here, but also in creating whatever future that you want to create for yourself in that other area. Okay. So thank you so much. I love you guys. And don't forget, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. So when you start to feel uncomfortable, get excited because something great is about to happen. Have an awesome evening. I'll Thanks, see you Alex. Guys soon. Feel free to reach out to me, okay? Hi, everyone. See you bye -bye. on the 25th.